Mike Singer from the Denver. Hey, Austin, good to see you. When you first got here, um, you talked about how when you weren't on a team, you didn't necessarily know what your future held. You, you said you knew you deserved to be in the NBA and playing, but you didn't necessarily know what the future meant. Given that, what does it feel like to silence the crowd um, in the playoffs on the road? Uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, you know, I sat there for like a month and a half waiting for the for the um, for the phone to ring and. Uh, you know, I just put my faith in God. I kept just having conversations with myself, just talking to God, like, what's the plan? What's going to happen? Um, and all the feedback I kept getting is that a lot of teams liked me, but they didn't know what type of character I was um, and how I would be in their locker room. Uh, my basketball ability was never questioned. It was who I was as a person, which is actually even worse. Um, uh, and truthfully, it broke my heart um, because I know who I am and uh, always had good relationships with people, but you can have one instance or mistakes and be labeled something. And again, I have, I, I've alluded to this earlier, but I, early in the year, I wasn't perfect um, in some situations years ago, but everything happens for a reason. And um, I've grown so much as a, as a human, um, even more so than being a basketball player, just as a person. And uh, it's the only thing that got me through uh, that month off was just being patient and staying ready, staying in shape and uh, just hoping someone would give me a call and um, Denver uh, coach Malone, Tim Conley called me and we're like, we know what you would bring to this team and we, we would love for you to come play and fast forward to the night. And, um, you know, it feels good. I don't know how much I can elaborate on that. It just feels really good, man. Um, this game could, could bring you the lowest feeling in the world. Yeah, I swear some of these nights you could feel so low. And then this game can make you feel so good about yourself too. It's a beautiful game. Um, and uh, everything that I've gone through over the past two months has taught me just to never take anything for granted. And it helps me play with a different type of chip on my shoulder and a different type of hunger. Cause I promised myself I would never be back in that situation ever again. And I won't be, no matter what, I'll play uh, on that court with every ounce of energy I have. And, um, you know, it's gonna keep building, you know, tonight was a good night. Um, but it's 2 1. We have a lot more work to do. So just got to keep building. Katie Wingy, Altitude. Hey, Austin, listening to you talk about coach sending you in, saying, shoot the ball, having your teammates support you, Paul Melsap, Will Barton saying, be you tonight. I guess this is a two part question. One, how perfect of a fit do you feel like Denver is for you at this point of your career? Man. And two, is that normal? Like, is that normal to have a coaching staff and a whole bunch of players already have your back in that way in the NBA? Uh, well, I've been in the league for 10 years, so I think they, they knew who I was and they, they knew what I was capable of. It's not like I just started, you know, playing well or, you know, I've had, you know, been on teams and had success. So I think they saw it and they believed in me, but no, it's not normal to have that many guys from the get go help, you know, accept you. And, and um, you know, it was such a warm welcoming here uh, beyond anything I've ever experienced in my life. Um, so that just boosts your confidence. You know, Coach Malone boosts my confidence. The Tim Conley boosts my confidence. Um, Will Barton, PJ Dozier, uh, Monte Morris, all these guys, um, Paul Millsap, JaVale, these guys talked to me throughout the game. But we all talk to each other. You know, we all talk to each other. That's why we, we play with such confidence. You know, we've had guys down and we just keep that train rolling. Obviously, it starts with the big fella. Um, but everybody pushes each other. So this team is, we are really a team. It's just a true team. And that's fun to play basketball like that, to be a part of something where it's, it's always um, about the next guy, you know. And um, it's fun to play here. And it's been a great fit. I, I've never been somewhere where I've just fit somewhere. Uh, not just basketball wise, but culturally wise, I fit, you know, I have the same background as a lot of these guys in terms of even coach and, and um, coach Adelman, you know, we all come from, you know, coaches who coached and I mean, fathers who coached and it's just, it's a good fit. So I just got to keep working. There's a lot, a lot of better things I can continue to prove on. And um, I'm going to do work on that. Mark Kisla, Denver. Okay. Without, without getting too philosophical here, I mean, I know that most of us are flawed. I know I am. And, and most of us even know we're flawed. 
but it's hard for us to change. So with in those conversations with God you had, what what were you trying to find out and what were you looking for? And and on the up each side, do you feel like you found a home here? Um yeah, honesty with myself is what I was trying to find. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell yourself things that you got to change or things you got to get better at. Um, because it's when things aren't going right, the easiest thing to do is to point a finger at somebody or a situation and be like, well, it wasn't meant for me to be here. Well, you know, work out here because of this, that, or this. But ultimately, everything that happens is on you for the most part. Um, in this league, I'm not going to say everything, but a lot of things are. And um, it pushed me to, to find myself in terms of how I need to approach the game um, as, as, a, as a leader, as a teammate, as a professional. Um, and not that I haven't done this for years, but there's levels to it. And I knew I had to raise that level even higher. No one's ever questioned my basketball ability. No one's ever questioned my work ethic. Um, it, it, the character was the thing that I kept hearing. And that, that was the hardest thing for me to hear because I didn't know how I could, how can, how can you work on that? How can you work on something that you always feel like, I know I'm a good guy. I, I feel like I'm a good guy. I, I had good relationships with my teammates, wherever I played. Um, how can I work on this? And the best thing you can do is be honest with yourself. And, and, and my talks with God, I just looked in the mirror or when I would sit in bed or I sit on that couch watching other players play. You, you sit there and you just talk to yourself and you're like, awesome, oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. And I don't want to go into detail what those things are, but um, honesty is, is the best way I've gotten through. Just being honest with myself and realizing that I have work to do, a lot of work to do on myself. And uh, my process is still going now. And I'm, it's okay to say that. That's you know, I'm far from a finished product. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a humbling experience, um, but it, it's made me a better player. It's made me a better person. <clears throat> Nick Cosmider, the athlete. Now, Austin, you, you've been in this game, like you said, like 10 years, and you, you, you know, you watch players, you, you know this game well, you're the son of a coach. So, you know, what Nikola Jokic was as from an from an outside perspective, having watched him play, having seen his game, what are things that you learn as his teammate in these moments about him that that you don't that don't know uh, when when you're not his teammate when you're watching from the other side? I'll be honest, I, I knew Jokic was really good. Obviously, we all do. Did I did I know he was this good? You know, sometimes you really don't know until you play with a player. It's kind of the same thing I used to say about when I played with James Hart. You play with someone and you realize, man, this dude is really a different level. Um, that's what I've been hit with right away from here. And I haven't been here, I've been here for a couple months, whatever the case may be, but that dude is so good at basketball, man. He's just, he's unstoppable. I don't know how you stop him. He's, he can shoot, he can pass, he hits shots that are unorthodox. He plays physical, uh, his, his IQ, he, he, he moves the ball, he makes the right read 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, and that's why he's the MVP. And I think there's no debate about him being MVP. I think it's going to be a unanimous decision. Um, he's a special player and it's fun playing with someone like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a great experience and, uh, it's very lucky to be here, quite frankly. So. All right. Also, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Brendan Voigt from DNVR. Hey, Austin, we, we just heard Michael Malone say he's encouraging you to shoot more when you're open. We've heard similar stuff from, from Michael Porter. I'm just curious if there's been an evolution at this point in your approach from when you first got here, maybe trying to be low mistake and just fit into, I mean, you, you maybe just want a playoff game on the road. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it wasn't like you were wide open. We're not shooting the ball. You know what I mean? It's more so just like if you catch it, you know, you got to let it fly. Even if someone's closing out or someone's there, he just wants me and Michael to be aggressive because um, we got to help scoring um, on that offensive end. Uh, just because the, the load is so heavy on, on the big fella. And, um, you know, obviously Michael is a huge scorer as well. So, you know, coach just tells me when I get in there, he's like, I need you to be aggressive. I need you to look to score. Uh, so when you when you got your head coach telling you that, I mean, at that point, your eyes just light up. I mean, that's the best thing any player can hear is that their coach wants you to shoot the ball. So you go out there and you shoot with confidence and, you know, uh, you just keep going. So I've definitely, you know, we definitely got to continue to be aggressive, all of us, not just me, you know. Monte, Michael, everybody. So, all right, that'll do it. Thank you, Austin. Thank you.